six things that every good superintendent does. So in this video, we're gonna do a bit of a deep dive into what superintendents do, what are their main focuses, and what are some steps that you can take tomorrow to be great. And so I wanna kick this off. I did a video just like this for PMs, which we can link you to in the description below whenever it's ready. And I hope you really enjoy that video as well for PMs. But for a superintendent, I wanna expound specifically on that field role and also anchor you to the same image that I drew for the PM video. So my point was that a project manager will really focus on building the team, really help to make sure that there's a great plan, and then allocate resources. So this is a pretty neat pattern in my mind, and I wanna pull this together. A project manager is able to work with the owners and the resources to get what they need, and it's the superintendent's job to see the future. So if I just drew a line here, this is the project, right? There's a rhythm and a cadence uh, in that project when we need the expertise of certain team members we're going to engage the plan and we're going to utilize the resources. So it's really the superintendent's job to bring the team, the plan and the resources into the future timeline at the right cadence and interact in a way where we can build the job, build the job, build the job, build the job. So if it's the PM's job to provide, it's the superintendent's job to implement. So I like that. And I've already told you the story where I asked a really uh, expert professional in the industry, hey, what's the difference between a PM and a super? He said brilliantly, a PM's job is to read the owner's mind, superintendent's job, the superpower is to see the future. So I thought that was pretty fantastic. And I'd like to discuss with you now, what are the six main habits that help a superintendent to do that? All right, so let's go through these one by one. So the focuses are a little bit similar to the PMs. Uh, the first one for a uh, project superintendent or superintendent is to build the team. So uh, one thing that will happen is if you have your field folks on site, there's the PM and the project engineer keeping a cohesive relationship with between field and office to where I don't have to draw a line here. I don't want any separation there. This is crucial. But if you're a superintendent, one of the key things that you must do is build the actual field team. So this is going to sound a little bit different, but the foreman, I'll just write F here and the superintendent here, those foremen, they're your team. So building them, uh, having them get to know each other, learn to trust each other, uh, have healthy conflicts, set goals and perform is, is your responsibility. So if you would create a, a culture and environment over here, uh, and I'll just draw an arrow, do it with your foreman as well. If you would bring donuts and go out to lunch, why not do it with your foreman as well, right? If you would uh, do certain trainings with your team or concepts, why wouldn't you do it with your foreman as well? You want the connection between superintendents and foreman to be really, really close and for this to be a cohesive team. This is what happens. If the project management team is team number one and the foreman field team is team number two, then the crews, if this is done right, ideally is team number three, meaning that this is how it scales. Uh, long-term, uh, short and long-term, and then the short-term, right? And so the order of priority and precedence flows in this direction, right? If you don't build a good team here, then this will be uh, team number one and the only team that matters to the foreman. And they'll basically say, you know, forget you, uh, superintendent team, project management team, and you'll have a bunch of different foremen doing whatever they want in a disconnected, siloed, and suboptimized manner. So building that team right here is cohesive so that we can scale information, instructions, and culture in the right direction and really, really, really take care of this uh, team right here. So if you're like, oh my gosh, you just disrespected the foreman and the workers by making them team three. No, think about a family. Do the kids want one parent, like be the only one that matters, or do the kids wanna just go off and do a Lord of the Flies? No, they want mom and dad to really be getting along and have a strong marriage. 
and then they will be happier. So if you want to have a really, really healthy crew, you will have a healthy project management team and a healthy last planner team with the foreman. Once they're cohesive, they can be effective, enabled, and happy. So building the team is one of the top priorities for a superintendent. Number two, keep the team focused. So this was similar in the project manager outline, but let me explain what a super does. If you have a uh, project level tact plan, and maybe it has multiple phases, by the way, these are zones, okay? And then this is time on the top. And this just signifies that there are trades moving from zone to zone to zone in a flow. If you have a tact plan, then you automatically know the buffers your milestones that you need to hit for the project plan and you know that you have a good sequence and you have a good speed with your trade partners okay so uh, this is crucial when you have your master schedule you now have your end date when you do pull planning with your trades let's take just this sequence right here and you do a pull plan with your trades you can uh, make your schedule go a little bit faster by zoning it where you can gain some buffers at the end, okay? So your schedule really starts to refine and you're able to have a little bit of slack here, okay? You'll want that with your trade partners so that if there's any delays, you can eat into that buffer. Now, the key thing from a planning standpoint to keep your trades focused is three months ahead of these phases, you will do your pull plan. Uh, three weeks ahead of the activities, you'll do your quality pre-construction meeting and you'll always look out six weeks and look out a week for your look aheads and your weekly work plans. That, and this actually should go all the way down the schedule, sorry. That will enable you from a weekly work plan standpoint to go create what's called the day plan and you're able to go execute in the field with your workers. So always keep your trade partners focused on not only the milestone for the end of the project, but your phase milestones the next six weeks, the next week, and that day plan so they know exactly how to do their work, which maintains trade flow. By the way, I just thought to myself, oh my gosh, this is such a cool video. If you think this is a cool video too, please like. Like the algorithm sends it to other, uh, to other people that are on YouTube and they'll get the same information and will elevate the industry. I would love to ask you for that. Habit number three is similar to the PM, but you are managing any risks that uh, roadblocks and constraints that you, and I'll just write habit number three for this, uh, that the trades might have within this group and you're looking at these risks inside the master schedule, especially in the look ahead. All of these X's mean it's either a roadblock or a problem or a constraint. And especially when you're in the weekly work plan, a superintendent will make sure that he or she is always attempting to manage the risks and clear the path so that you don't have any red here in the day plan by the time they implement. Number four, based on these uh, risks and roadblocks, the superintendent is always working with the trades. Let's say there's a trade in a certain zone uh, with the trades to make sure, hey, if that trade is working in that zone, that we're planning work ahead and finishing work behind and punching as we go, and that we're going to hand off and move into that other zone on time. So the superintendent's always in the schedule, managing the long term, the shorter term, and the actual zone control, how trades are flowing through zones on a day-by-day -day basis. So that was number four, uh, tracking the schedule. Number five is bringing those resources that the PM and the PE are helping with and making sure that they're aligning with the schedule properly. I'll probably just draw this in a single line. If you have an activity uh, inside this look ahead or in the schedule in general, but I'll just put it here. The superintendent is instrumental in making sure that that supply chain, so I'll just write supply, is heading to this point 
with a little bit of a buffer and that everybody has what they need. So if you're like, Jay Money, why are you just randomly writing X's? If you don't have the resources or the labor or the information or the permissions to do any of these activities, then they become little red X's. And the focus of a superintendent is to make sure that each of the activities within the schedule, that we're able to supply those resources, and if not, that's when you would consider a roadblock and go into problem solving mode. Which is item number six, and I'll just go ahead and write that down. Uh, so number five was supply, and number six, solving these problems one by one. I love this pattern, I shared this in the PM video. Identify, discuss, solve. This is your main role. Your trade partners know how to work in their zones and how to accomplish their schedule. It's your job to clear the way. So if you're doing this look ahead planning, if you're managing the supply and you're finding these roadblocks and problems, that's great. Bring all problems to the surface, discuss them with your trades and solve them so that they can flow beautifully from zone to zone to zone in a flow. So these are the six main responsibilities of a superintendent. And if you follow this, you are going to be wildly successful. And so if you want more material on this, I'll link you to in the description below to our book, Elevating Construction Superintendents, Elevating Construction Senior Superintendents, which talks about how to build the team. And I'll also link you to the website where you can sign up for the Super PM Bootcamp, where you can go and immediately elevate your game. I hope you've enjoyed this video. On we go.